Hey there, folks, Paul Marco, and yes, I'm sitting on my throne so I can be the Prince of Bel Air or the Pimp Hand of America. Take your pick. You saw the title, Competition Kills. And I know a lot of people out there just saw the title and they decided to jump in and comment below about, bah, 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 what does this guy know? What does this guy know? Well, let me tell you what I know. I've been playing this game for well over 30 years. I took my first professional training class, my first professional firearms training class in 1986, do the math. I've been an instructor since 1990, do the math. And when I see people posting their videos, these quick one minute videos or 30 second videos from competitions, it, well, it gets under my craw a little bit, or, or it's kind of a, a, a burr in my saddle, under my saddle, if you will. Because what I see is I see people engaging in activity. And if you want to play games with guns, that's cool. Gun, games are fun. Competitions are fun. Matches are fun. That's great. But don't pretend like what you're doing is training or is preparing you to survive a lethal force encounter. And one of the biggest pet peeves I see is the use of cover. Now, in 1986, when I took my first class from John Farnham, if you don't know who that is, look him up. He's one of the uh, godfathers. Uh, he's one of the three wise men of firearms training who remain. John Farnham told us in 86, always be cover conscious. When you're moving around, you need to be cover conscious. If, I, if he, he said basically, if I say gun or go or move or whatever, you should be able to move immediately toward the nearest cover. You should be cover conscious. Additionally, if you find yourself in a lethal force encounter, right, and you're not behind cover, you should be moving to cover. What you should not be doing is standing still. So either you're behind cover, returning fire, or you're not behind cover and you're moving toward cover because cover keeps bullets from hitting us, right? That's the purpose of cover, to keep incoming rounds from striking us. What is more important in a gunfight, shooting the bad guy or not getting shot? Not getting shot is the priority. You see, if you don't get shot, you can keep making other decisions and doing other things. If you get shot, you start running out of options. As long as you're not shot, you still have options. Cover conscious. Always be looking for cover. If you realize that you're in a fight, you should either be behind cover or moving towards cover. Okay, great. Fantastic. We all agree on that, right? We all know what cover it is. And we all agree on it. Well, there's some of you out there who like to participate in games, and you're really good at playing games. Awesome. Cool. You play games with pistols. You play games with rifles. Just the other day, I saw someone who was playing a game with a rifle, and they called it the tactical game. Cool. Cool story, bro. So bro runs up to plywood, and it represents cover, right? So what does bro do? Bro does what you always do in games. He goes over the top of it, extends his muzzle beyond it, leans onto it, takes his shots, and runs around the side and goes. All right. If you're serious about owning a firearm for personal defense, if you're serious about owning a gun to save your life or the lives of your family, you need to engage in, well, honest behavior. What are we doing? Are we practicing to play a game or are we practicing and training for the real world? Because the two of them are not necessarily the same thing. How many of you know about the Norco bank robbery in 1980? Probably very few of you. Most of you weren't even born then. You think it's ancient history. Well, long story short, five bad guys decided to rob a bank in Norco. One of them was a getaway driver. He got killed in the very beginning. The rest of them hijacked a truck and led police on a high-speed chase for about 45 minutes. It was a running gun battle from the bank all the way out into the country. And about a dozen or so, maybe more, police officers were injured, but only one died. And he died at the very end of the gun battle. Well, I'll give you the quick 
synopsis. So the bad guys are trying to escape. They go into a national forest. They run out of road. They can't go any farther. They bail out of the stolen truck. There's police officers right behind him in cars. The guy who is directly behind him sees what they're doing, throws it in park, jumps out, pulls out his revolver, because that's what they had back then, six-shot revolver, fires, bang, 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 hits one guy, score, dude goes down, retreats, takes cover behind his cruiser, fires the rest of his rounds, boom, 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 now his gun's dry because he only had six, using cover of the car, concealment and cover, reloads his gun, and then he pops right back up to where he was previously shooting. And what the, had happened was he got killed immediately because the bad guys saw him disappear, watched that spot, and when he reappeared in that spot, they killed him. And you're like, oh, well, that's that sucks and it's, it's sad for him, but what does that have to do with me playing games? And what does that have to do with tactical games? Ladies and gentlemen, if you understand that cover is important, if you understand that if you're not behind cover, you should be moving towards cover. If you understand all of that, you need to understand how to use cover properly. Generally speaking, it is a bad idea to go over cover because that's where bad guys and the average person assumes you're going to be. That's where they're looking for you. They're waiting for you to pop up over the hood. They're waiting for you to peek up over the brick wall. That's what they're doing. If you can go around the right or the left of cover, that's always better. If there's a car and, or a raised truck, rather than trying to shoot over it, hit the ground and shoot under it because they won't be expecting that. But how do you learn to do that? And how do you practice doing that? You do that by engaging in realistic training. If you're playing these games, and you're shortcutting tactics. You know, a lot of you out there are like, oh, I know, Paul. I went to I went to a training school and they taught us all about pieing the corner and not to expose our rifles or our pistols, not to push them out around cover, you know, around a blind cover because someone could be there or not to go over the top. I learned all that. OK, cool. Do you do that when you play three gun tactical games, whatever? Oh, no, because I got to go fast. I'm on the timer. So and I've got to get my shots down. So. I mean, in, in the game, I'll go over the top of cover, lean my gun on it, expose myself on the other side of cover, and I'll do that. And then as soon as I fire my shots, I'll jump up and run. That's okay. But if it's ever real, I won't do that. You're kidding yourself. You're lying to yourself. Because in a life or death situation, you are going to do what you have done the most. You're not gonna rise to the occasion you're gonna to default to whatever it is, whatever actions and behaviors you have mastered and done the most. And if what you've done the most is participate in three gun, tactical games, whatever, where you shortcut real tactics, where you use poor cover or you use cover very poorly, or this is what another one of my pet peeves is, well, they use cover, they lean out, bang, 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 and boom, they're off and gone. Like, yeah, I got, I'm on the timer, man. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. You know, when people, when you shoot people with handguns, generally they don't burst into flames and they don't disintegrate. A lot of times when you shoot people with handguns, they just keep on doing what they were doing before because they're, they're not aware that they're supposed to be dying. So if you train yourself to lean out, bang, 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 and jump out from cover and, and take off, that's what you're probably going to do. Oh, no, I would never do that. I would never go over the top of cover because I know better. I would never extend my gun beyond the cover because I know better. What do you do more? Not trying to hurt your feelings, not trying to make you feel bad, but this is the reality of the situation. If you're participating in a game, in a competition or whatever, and you're violating good sound tactics so you can shave off seconds and fractions of seconds and so on and so forth, or you're putting your rifle on top of cover so you can stabilize it better and get those really good tight hits, that's great. And when you're laying on the ground bleeding to death, when your head is split open, you have people like, I gotta get my split times down. I gotta stabilize my gun, get my split times. Your skull's gonna get split by incoming rounds. That's what's gonna get split. If you're serious about carrying a gun and owning a gun for protection, for the preservation of life, 
You need to behave like you're serious. And if you're not, if all you want is to play games, then go for it. Just play games all day long and for, you know, leave the serious stuff to other people. But don't delude yourself thinking that you're playing tactical games. Therefore, you're learning how to be tactical because you're not. And I love you. And I want you not to get shot by incoming rounds. And I want you to use cover properly. And I talked about that very thing in this book. That's right. Last year, I wrote a bunch of books. And one of them was the martial application of the rifle. We talk about using cover in this book. All right, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to sit here on my throne. You go do whatever it is you want to do. I'm Paul Markle with Student of the Gun. Remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.